Steeple Art Band. How are you? Doing good, man. How are you? Good, good, good. You're on a tour. You're at the other side of the globe. How are you? Are you guys yeah. from now? I don't know. You were in Germany or Poland or you guys were everywhere. On um, this tour, tour, yeah, it's uh, Poland, Czech Republic, Slovakia, and Austria. Wow. How's so, yeah, that it's pretty cool. Like, is it weird right now? Because I know there's some things going on in wars and territories and it's kind of goofy. Um, you know, as far as the shows go, it's been great. The turnouts have been great. People are into it. Um, and the atmosphere is good. When, when we do get close to the Ukraine border, you might, you know, if you're really perceptive, you might feel a little bit of tension in the air, obviously, because there's some crazy things going on. Yeah. Here. But the, um, so yeah, everybody might have a, a cautious air about them to some degree, but the shows have been, I mean, people are turning up. It's, we have no complaints as far as the shows. It's been, it's been awesome. We haven't been here since 2017. So people are ready for it. How, how long before you guys started to pick up over? I mean, because you're a really, you know, boots to the ground touring band. And, you know, so you're not like releasing big top 40 hits. So you guys, you know, to build a right. following of over, overseas was at the hardest yeah. part, like to, to get to the point where, you know, people know you. Is that the hardest part? Well, yeah. And I, th I think I'm, I probably mentioned this the last time we talked. Um, it's been a slow, steady roll for us over here. And, and our, our first, uh, the thing that got us started was was playing in Spain in 2000, I want to say it was 2006, mm -hmm. being invited to play the Esquina Rock Festival. So the first few initial trips over here were primarily just Spain. And then a few years in, you know, we found different promoters in that and started to venture out into other countries like Germany and getting to Italy and Ireland and eventually Poland. And now we've been working with the Delta Agency here in Poland um, so this is really our, our third time working with them, second full tour. So it's been, it's been a, a slow, steady roll, and now it's gotten to the point where we're on our third European tour this year, That's doing awesome. different areas, and it's really, really grown, and we weren't sure how it was going to be after COVID. But Spain Spain was great. Belgium was great. Um, we did the UK, first proper tour of the UK that was great. Mm -hmm. now, and now these are good. They've been really successful, so we're we're – Happily, happily, very happy about that. Yeah, I, I think. Well, we got to say because you know, if you're not, if also you know, you're not a radio hit band like a big, you know, top forty band. It's hard right. to break a market when you know to get fans out there. But you're the kind of band that also will have the loyalty once they've heard you. People are going to come out to see you forever now, which is a different niche audience, which is better because it's how you build your career and not become a flash sure. in the pan. And I think it's great. Is I mean, you you guys are not. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't know how to categorize your music because you have a lot of everything. I think like if, if someone's a fan of like the Allman Brothers, but also of the especially classic Black Rose, but also Tedeschi, you know what I'm saying? Like there's so many different types of music in, in with your music that yeah. a lot of people can really kind of kind of get into it because there's not a lot of bands doing that now. They've got that really groove to their music. Yeah, it's like we just do our thing. We just write songs and put albums out and it's it's always been blues based to a certain degree. And I've seen, I've seen the past few few years on these tours. Even when we play like a blues club or a blues society or somebody in the in the blues realm books the mm -hmm. band, they're really starting to understand what we're doing. You know what I mean? Like, there's no other expectation for them other than to hear the Steepwater Band. They know what it's about. We just we just write songs and, and our influences are there, but we sound like us. You know, so it's not right. it's not a straight blues band. No. It, it's just a, it's a it's a root, roots based uh, rock and roll band that we just write songs and go to it and it's really uh, people are reacting to it and understanding what it is we're, we're doing. I think your music is starting to define. I think you guys are really kind of honing in on on your sound too over these past couple albums. You know, because yeah. one song would be like, oh, we're, we're dancing kind of in the countryish area. Next thing you know, it's got like a Stones the nineteen early seventies backbeat to it. Like it has such different elements to it to each song. Yeah, but it has a common theme, and I think each album's getting you know really defining for your sound, in my opinion. You know, yeah, I think even even if if you if you play and write together long enough over the years, even if you like covered a diversity like that, it's it still gets somewhat rev refined where it sounds like yeah. your band. Where it's not so far out in left field. Like, what the hell is this song? That doesn't you know? No, what no, I mean? no, no, no. I'm it all myself, sounds like us. <laughs> it does. But what I'm saying is, like, when I first listened to your stuff earlier on. And I'll still go back and listen to it. 
I, I, yeah. I hear it as in the new stuff now, it's like I, I can pick it out. Yeah. But now it just feels like it's a little more fine tuned on certain songs now than it was before. Sure. Which is okay. It's just it's not bad or good. It's just different. You know what I mean? It was just, I love it. So I, I think maybe more people, it's easier for people's ears to kind of pick up that. You know. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, I hyper focus, so that's probably what it is. So you got you you redid Return of the Wheel. I mean, unfortunately, with COVID, you didn't get to really go out and do the other album, which is a fantastic album. You know, right? Um, Thank- but I love it. I think that's when I had you on. We were talking about when it first came out, um, and I've been a fan before yeah. that. What are we doing now? Because the new one is is, is Return of the Wheel. Uh, right? Okay, Return of the Wheel. You got some a new one or two songs on there, plus some uh, an acoustic song and some new songs. And you guys are calling like a yes. companion piece. How are you working into your set? Yeah, you it's that new album to promote plus this album. So you got a lot there. We're we're just treating it like two new albums because cool. I think we talked last time that Turn of the Wheel was done and we were already taking pre-orders for the record. Right when everything went crazy with the pandemic, and a lot of bands were saying we're not going to put our record out because we can't tour, and we're like, well, our record's ready to go. Um, we might as well have people sit people that want it can sit and hear it or stream it at home during the pandemic, even though we're not touring on it. Um, we wanted to put it out. We didn't want to sit on it because then it's not a new record to us anymore. Well, I was going to say, I agree with you. I think a lot of bands, it was interesting to me now is hearing was where you went with it because there was no right yeah. or wrong. And the dynamic for every band handling it was totally different on Uncharted Waters. Right. So now hearing the follow-up on how it went, like as a fan, I loved it. Because at that point, right when COVID hit, there was not a lot of new music. So to me, yeah. it was like, oh, it's like a gift. And other bands, as it started, went on, it started to spread it out. And there was no wrong. But how did that work out, though? I think it worked out great because by the time we things did open up, we were so hungry to play these songs that, you know, we just delved right back into it. And the band was on fire right out of the gate because all the anticipation to play those right. songs. And then the people um, that wanted to hear it live are all fired up to see it. And then... Right around the time things were opening up a little bit, uh, I had written some songs at home and the, and the guys were working on things. And I think I, I think I discussed this before. Uh, things weren't quite all the way open. People were starting to get vaccinated. But Joe and I, Joe, our drummer, Joe Winters, we got in a room together with his brother where we recorded Turn of the Wheel at his studio. And we started laying tracks with just drums and guitar and, okay. and vocals as an experiment. But turns out we ended up sending the tracks to Eric and he he put his guitars on his home studio and then Joe Bishop came in and did bass. Um, so not the way we would usually do a record piece by piece like that, but somehow it came out sounding like us in a room still. Yeah. And <laughs> so we decided, you know, it's we just kind of turned it into one big session. It was Joe's idea to just make it a, a companion piece and call it Turn of the Wheel and Return of the Wheel. You know, because it's all in that same timeline of, of the pandemic going on. And one is at the beginning of, of and not that we're, you know, the pandemic's still right, here. Right. To some degree, no, I but when things are opening up. So it was all part of that era. So now we end up with two two new records to promote. It feels right. It belongs together. It doesn't yeah. feel like, it feels like it would have been a double album. Because your other album, each album appears to me, I can hear the difference. They stand out different time periods. These yeah. two fit together. I think Companion is probably because it does feel like it's a double album. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of what we were going for. Extra songs. They're all really good songs on the new one, too. Choosing yeah, songs. Yeah, we didn't want to just put out stuff to put out. Just, you right. know, we wanted it to be good. Like I said, it was an experiment doing just guitars and drums and seeing if it would even work. But when we heard the songs coming together and then we heard what Eric could do at his home studio and it started coming together, like, I think we can put this out. Well, that's, that, that's the thing. I mean, are you, how are you choosing songs to play though? I'm saying, cause you have a new album of really good songs prior and now you have another album. So you have two new albums with the, for your set list. Are you rotating them through or how are you doing that for playing out with fans? We, yeah, we do a lot of rotation because that, we got the two new albums and then we, right. you know, when we get over here in Europe, there's people that saw us on the last tour. So now they're familiar with the last album. So they want to hear that. There's right, people that want to hear stuff. So yeah, you're going to, so each night, you know, we're playing, we're playing like a, a, the, the foundation of it would be mostly turn of the wheel and return of the wheel. Mm-hmm. And then, but we play a different set every night. And then, and then around that, a few cover tunes and a few older Steepwater songs. But yeah, we're mixing it up pretty, pretty heavy every night. There might be three, four, 
five that get played every night and the rest are rotated. Well, I feel like, like Shake Your Faith and like a lot of, actually looks at some of your songs, you know, a year or other. Yeah. Days. Um, I love Be As It May and Break. I think those are, uh, you know, you so yeah. Many, off that album, I mean, I, I, there's so many good, because I can just rotate, I can just shuffle. With your type, with your music, and you can't do this with every band, is I can just hit shuffle, because I have all your albums yeah. on iTunes, and just let it shuffle through all, all the albums. So. That's cool. That's fun. You know what I mean? Some bands, you can't yeah. do that. It's like you're, it's not bad. It's just like that artist, like the best album is that time period or something. And you just have to listen to it. You know, you can't go like yeah. from one to the other because it's just too jerky of a song difference. With yours, it's just a nice, you know, it's like singing a concert. It's, it's, it's a good sound. I appreciate you know? it. Yeah. It's Plus, really we cool. have to mix it up for our own interest, too. We're not, in, I mean, we're not interested in playing the same set every night. No. But also, you know, like it keeps us on our toes not to. How are you even doing cover songs? You have so many songs to do. Are yeah. I mean, <laughs> We forget about songs too. I mean, we'll be we'll be riding on the way of the gig and be like, "Oh, what about that song? Oh, my, forgot about that." And then go over it and sound check. Like last night, we decided to do "Stop Breaking Down" because the promoter that brought us over here, that's like his. He loves when when we do "Stop Breaking Down." We hadn't played that song in probably five years, so we just went over it sound check and threw it in as the encore last night, and it was great. So that's cool. You guys should do some yeah. live releases, like downloads, like some of the bands do, like, like you know, like the Dead or like the Crows, just like a lot of those bands. You're the kind of band that I, I, you know, even when you do like the YouTube clips, you guys sound so good live. Yeah. I, and, and doing different sets, you could really kind of, because you, you have a whole history of music that bands haven't heard or could hear it doing live, different live sets and go back to the albums again, you know what I mean? Yeah, if we could archive that somehow. I know I know there's people that come out and tape us and it shows up on like our archive.org and obviously right. uh, YouTube material and all that. And sometimes a club will tape us. But it would be great to have an archivist just traveling along recording every night, wouldn't it? It would be. I mean, you not know, a bad plug, idea. It, plug some kind of crazy dat thing off the board or some kind of, you know, something. Because you guys are yeah. a live band and to have a history yeah. of going back and listening to it. And it wouldn't hurt if you guys had your, your finger on the pulse of your own music putting it out there and getting a couple of bucks from it too. You know, yeah. Chris do that a lot now. I mean, well, you know, anything, anything's possible in the future. So the thing, that's a good idea. I mean, I don't know how hard it is to do, but I know as a fan, it would be kind of fun to hear your other live shows. Yeah. Especially going around, you know, you also, sure, do, I agree. You have some great guitars you've been showing on your Instagram. Um, yeah. I've been lo loving them. And also you were doing some solo stuff too. You like to do your own thing on the side too. What's going on with that? You had time or what? Oh yeah, well I do acoustic shows whenever possible, and I've been uh, I've been doing this residency at a place called Austin's with uh, Greg Razab and Jay Davenport, who were uh, they were John Mayall's rhythm section. Oh wow, that doesn't and, suck. And yeah, just by coincidence, Greg's been a friend of our band and went to high school with my brother, and we've just known each other for years and always talked about doing something. Yeah. So because of my steep water schedule, I can't really pursue that too, okay. you know, to, to do too crazy. But for now, we've just decided to do a once a month residency at this, at, at Austin's. And we just get together and we play like Robin Trower and Jimi Hendrix and, and Freddie King. And it's been awesome. So, so side things in steep water, you know, are not discouraged because, you know, Joe, our drummer also has a project called Fur Baby yeah. with some friends of ours and he just did tour of spain actually met us here in poland so wow you know doing things on the side is only going to make steep water better in our eyes I agree. it's just it just gets tricky it's get you know i, I hate to say the side because those guys are such good musicians it's you know but well, you, no, it's like you know what i mean it's, yeah no it, it helps all yeah but you got to juggle the schedule <laughs> yeah well and, and it's funny yeah. i say this and like when, if i talk from talking to a, a metal band especially you get like, like a lot of the hard hardcore bands like the death metal bands a lot of them are like in 15 projects yeah. And it's like, how do you find time? It's not about the art. It's about finding time as a musician to me and Zoom and this and that, and then rehearse and do a couple of gigs. Yeah. And then, but you still have to have your main band because that's where you built up your audience, you know, your, your career. Right. You, have, you, have, you actually have a crew or you have this or that. You have contracts. That's where you make your money. You still have to live. You know what I mean? Yeah, With that we don't rehearse. <laughs> we just show up and jam. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that it kind of that kind of makes it that much more fun. Wow, that's crazy. That I'd love to hear live too. Yeah, that, you know. Yeah, that would be, that'd be crazy to hear some of that stuff because it's limited to just you guys playing out live at one shots, you know. Yeah, it's, it's uh, go for it that night and hope for the best.
<laughs> you do some, what about what about just doing some solo stuff like just recording some solo stuff and putting it out there well i i I think I made the joke before that if I if I try to make a solo record, the musicians I would pick are already in Steepwater. That's true. So and that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> you know, it is. It's, it depends on the band. Sometimes some bands will have all four musicians all right, and it's just no room for all the songs. Some bands have right. one main songwriter. You know, and and we say like Eddie, they said Eddie Van Halen. Eddie watched yeah. his solo album. He goes, this, every album is an Eddie Van Halen album. Like it's like that is who I yeah, am. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, it's true. So that's why I just ask. Yeah. Sometimes you might be like, I have a bunch of mellow songs acoustically that just don't fit into because it's just me and the band wouldn't be playing it because it'd just be me. That kind of thing, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't cancel anything out. That might be fun to do something like that sometime or another acoustic record. Right. Um, That'd be very cool. But again, it's just now we're getting, we're just getting down to where Steep so so busy again. It's just, I don't, I don't know when I would do it right now. So, That's, yeah, that, but, is the, that is the best problem to have. It is a good problem to have. <laughs> I almost feel like you guys are gonna be bigger now after COVID than than I think the than you were. I think it's gonna start to hit, you know. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I, I mean, we're we're pretty happy with how these uh, these three Europe tours are going. I mean, it, it's it's been great. Yeah, it's good to see people filling the rooms and and letting us do what we do. And his last four albums, I mean, are also just been very, very much more accessible to people too. So I just think it's just going to grow. You guys are going to become very, yeah. you know, like it's just going to get bigger and bigger. Just strong cold pants. Now you're on tour and you're in, you're in a, are you in a hotel room? I'm looking at your background. I'm baffled for me. I'm distracted. Where are you? I'm in a hotel room in, in uh, Horzhov, Poland. What's going on? It looks very, I, when I think people do hotel rooms, it's like white walls. Like they're in like some kind of program. They're hiding from the government. It looks pretty decorated. It looks pretty cool. No, this is actually a pretty, pretty nice room here, yeah. It's a wall of yeah. different colors and designs and pictures. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah, we've actually, uh, we've come a long way from sleeping in bunk beds in France. <laughs> <laughs> bunk beds and we were Chewbacca masks. No, that's, and <laughs> that's a whole other story. <laughs> I'll, I'll bet that is. That's, that's for the book. That's the book, the coffee table book. The pictures <laughs> and the little stories on it. That, that's what it's going to be, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, what's the what's the tour? What's the plan now? Because you're, you're you're rounding up Europe. By the time we get done with this, you're gonna be hitting the Midwest in the U.S. Yeah, we got another week here. A couple more dates in Poland, a few dates in Czech Republic, and then we end Sunday in Vienna, Austria. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we've learned that sometimes it's good to take a week off when you get home. Yeah, <laughs> especially the flying the past, jet lag. Yeah, in the past we've done things like get home and then drive to Colorado and things like that, which is cool. But uh, no, we actually yeah. have a week off, and then we start. Then we start hitting the Midwest. Uh, got dates in Minneapolis, Milwaukee, Rockford, Illinois. Playing Fitzgerald's, which is one of our favorite clubs in Berwyn, Illinois. Uh, up in Lower Michigan. Um, yeah, all kinds of things going on. It's all on all on the website and yeah. our and our social yeah, media. And doing a big show in, in Northwest Indiana uh, in early December. So yeah, we'll, we'll be busy just hang, uh, keeping it around the Midwest for the remainder of the year. First of the year. So no, people check out on the website, I, as usual, you know, I have the links, everything else in the podcast and on, on YouTube page, look down below, click on the link, go to the page, see all the dates. We're just kind of saying it so people are listening right now, if you're driving or if you're watching and being like, hey, it's gonna be in your area. Check them out. Check them out live. They're a live band. You're good on you're good on vinyl or whatever you're listening to, but you're even a better live band. It's more fun. The energy is there that you know you can't uh, reproduce on a record. You know, and also our, the vinyl for Return of the Wheel is actually will be out soon too because Ooh. you all, as you know, the turnaround for vinyl these days is always six months after your actual release. So we're finally be getting our hands on those this fall. So that's that's something to look forward to. Very cool. And what about singles? Because it was it shift shift. Is it was it the, the single shift? Right? Yes, yeah, yeah it was a single. Yep. Okay, yeah, it's a new single. Are we doing the singles? How are we going to do that? And just videos? Any kind of videos or anything out there afterwards? Um, there's no videos as of right now, but probably something you might see in the near future. Um, just, just yeah, I think we're you know we're just going to celebrate having the vinyl. That's cool. I don't know if we're going to. I think having live clips out here. Already. You know, for, for a man like you, you know, really, I, I, all I enjoy is just like a live clip. You have a single, 
this is a live clip of you guys doing the song. Like I like on your on your yeah. YouTube. I want to encourage people to go over and also subscribe to their YouTube page. A lot of music on there. Yeah. Um, one of the things I love is you guys did it. Uh, was it a rehearsal or a jam during COVID? I don't know, like in a warehouse or somewhere. Uh, it's a nice little. We did a live rehearsal. That was our yes. first first rehearsal back or live. Re yeah, we did a live rehearsal when we were just getting back into it. I love it, um, and that's what made me think. Like, yeah, that was you, you guys need to do like recordings from some other live live shows because th that to me, I was like, I love that. I'd love to hear more of that as a fan. Yeah. You know? So or maybe even a live record because we we've done we've done three live records throughout our career, so it might be time to do another one. You know, it could be It'd be a double album. You got so much material now. Yeah, I don't know how we would pick the material, but <laughs> you can do the fans. You, you know, some people do. They go online to see what's being streamed the most. Sure, which, sure. Which is kind of okay because that way you're getting the the buying market. But then that doesn't always necessitate all the hardcore fans. So sometimes people do a poll and a vote. Like, what would you like to hear? You know? Yeah. There's different ways of doing it. You know. Well, it never fails, and I take it as a compliment. But when. It, Every show, especially over here, I mean, we're, we're trying to make a set list that's really diverse, but it never fails. There'll always be somebody that comes up and like, you didn't play so-and-so's song. You didn't, you know, so it's... Yeah, that is a compliment, though, because it's like... Yeah, good problem to have is to have too many songs, I guess. <laughs> right? You, yeah, you're writing too many good songs. I have too much awesome music to play for everybody. That really sucks. Yeah. <laughs> that's a first-world problem. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, Jeff, as, as always, I'm, I want to thank you for being the show. Of course, we'll have you back, you know, always again and again. We love your music. Yeah. Thank cool you guys. Um, so I tell everybody, go to the website, check them out when they come by a tour, get the album. If you haven't gotten it, order it. It's streaming on all the platforms. Return and then turn, of course. Then go back to the other stuff. It's all good.